I'm Larry Walther. This is principlesofaccounting.com chapter 20 and in this module we will complete our discussion of activity-based costing by looking at, a, at an implementation example. Follow along with the facts. This same example and spreadsheets and so forth are repeated in the textbook. David Ng formed the golf and music enthusiast company Game and developed two specialized products. Glasses Song which is a sunglasses with a built-in music player and then Cap Player, which is a golf cap with a built-in music player. The company maintains no inventory. For a recent period, Cap Player sold 90,000 units. The Glasses Song sold 110,000 units. And each product sells for $60 per unit, so that total sales were $12 million during the period. Here is an example of the company's calculation of material, labor, and applied overhead using a traditional costing. And we can see Cap Player has a per unit cost with a traditional costing model of $64.45. Glasses Song appears to be far more profitable, having a per unit cost of $47.27. Remember that we were selling the units at $60 a piece, so on its face, Cap Player appears to be unprofitable. Here's the income statement for the company. Revenues $12 million, minus our uh, Cap Player and Glasses Song cost, minus our period expenses related to selling general administrative cost, giving us our profit for the period of $400,000. Now, we decided to further evaluate our products using activity-based costing. We engaged a consultant who determined that our total product costs were 11 million and our SG&A was 600,000. That was evident in the preceding income statement. We also determined that the core components are the same in each product. That is, our electronic chips and wiring and so forth was deemed to be the same. Glasses Song does require a little more material for polarized lenses, and Cap Player requires a little extra labor for sewing, but otherwise they're essentially the same product. Both devices are produced in batches on an automated assembly line at the same pace and through similar steps. Automated machine we were renting from Rebel Robotics, and we pay a per unit rental charge based on the units produced through the production line. And we just have the one production line, and with each batch we have to set up the production line. We've learned by analysis that cap player can be produced in batches of 900, so to produce the 90,000 caps required 100 setups, 900 caps per setup, and the glasses can only be run in batches of 550, and we produced 110,000 pair of glasses, so we had to set up the assembly line 200 times to produce the glasses. Both of the products were designed by an internal development team. We maintain a tech support department, the caps are sold through golf courses and the golf pros help customers set up their caps and so we really only have to train the golf pros one time and as it turns out we only had a thousand calls to our tech support center to support the caps. The glasses songs are sold through the internet and each customer will call on average one time for tech support. So we have sold 110,000 glasses and we had 110,000 tech support calls. Now let's analyze our activities. Our robotics activity is deemed to be a unit level activity. We produced 200,000 units. We paid rental per unit. And so for the most part then we had 200,000 units produced. And that is the metric we're going to use for further evaluating our cost. Other activities such as production setup occurred at a batch level. We had 300 total setups, 100 for one product and 200 for the other. Our tech support, we had the 111,000 calls, 110,000 calls were related to supporting the glasses and 1,000 were related to supporting the caps. And finally, we did uh, two activities related to product design, uh, design of each of the two products, in other words. Okay, now, this spreadsheet looks rather intimidating, but really it's not. Let's divide it into smaller sections. Here's our total cost. This is the 11,600,000 of total cost that we incurred. We're breaking it out into traditional product cost and SG&A cost components material, labor, all of our overhead in the product cost section above and the SG&A cost listed below. We also look at our activity pools, robotics, production, tech support, product design, and then the unallocated amounts, amounts that we deem to be costs that aren't related to any of those four activities. And let's take a single row in the spreadsheet and see how this works. The company incurred 70,000 of insurance cost. A study was done, determined that 30% of that insurance was attributable to our robotics activity, 60% was attributable to production setup, and 10% to tech support. And so as we work across, we've allocated to the appropriate activities 100% of the $70,000 of insurance cost. We need to do that for each row in this spreadsheet, whether it's a product cost or an SJ&A cost. Certain costs that are directly traced, however, to cost objects, such as material and labor, it's not allocated in this schedule. It will be separately accounted for here momentarily. Now, the robotics department 
after we've done this tabulation, it's assigned cost of $2,200,000. We would have similar cost accumulation for each activity. And this is then what we're going to do. We're going to determine an allocation rate for robotics. We've got 200,000 units of activity attributable to 2,200,000 of cost. We get an activity cost of $11 per unit for robotics. If we were to work through this whole spreadsheet, what we would determine using the same process is that our production costs $1,700 per setup, our tech support costs $1 per call, and our product design costs $100,000 per product. This information is then used to determine our product profitability analysis. We have here, for example, on the robotics row, $11 per unit. Remember we had 90,000 units for the cap player, so we had $990,000 of robotics cost assigned to the cap player, and we had 110,000 glasses, and that gives us 1,210,000 is the cost for the glasses. There's the 2,200,000 cost for robotics assigned to the two products. We do that for each of our cost components and look what happens. Now we've concluded that cap player is actually more profitable than glasses song with activity based costing. Very simply once we did a very thorough analysis of the resources consumed by the activities necessary to support each of the product we got a different view in terms of what was happening within our business. One example of that is the tech support that was required to support Glasses Song was much more costly than was Cap Player. That was not evident under the traditional costing model of allocating overhead based on direct labor and then leaving all of the SG&A cost as a period expense. And so in some settings the activity based costing method can be quite revealing and allow someone to fine tune their business to better assess what products are contributing what amount to profitability of the business. In concluding on activity based costing, it is important to fully consider many variables, some of which are not always apparent. Managerial accounting provides many tools to support decision making and activity based costing is one such tool. ABC is not perfect, however. ABC is no better than the process used to identify activities and allocation percentages which are ultimately based on human judgment. Remember in our example we had to make a number of assumptions about what our activities were and what the costs were attributable to those activities. That spreadsheet itself was full of a number of uh, allocations and decisions. Hopefully they were sound and led to the better decision making process that we've seen.